Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to do a video where it's going to be a little unorthodox. We are going to be updating and upgrading that Titan T2 to this Rep PR4000. That's my childhood best friend Matt, who is nice enough to let me film this, but I have no idea how it's going to go. We're just going to wing it. We've got a four-year-old and a man who's never been on camera, so whatever happens, happens. We're gonna unbox this thing, put it together, test it out. Right. I'll chop it up pretty quick so you don't have to watch all the shenanigans that happen and we'll see how it goes. No, I can do this. I can cut this. Maybe we can build a box fort with these. Make a box fort! I'm sorry to say that we didn't get to make the box fort. Maddie pretty much destroyed every box after a while. And if you hate kids, don't worry too much. He goes to bed before too long. The PR4000 is on a short list of about five racks I'd upgrade to. It's a great rack if you don't want to spend rogue money and you don't want to sacrifice much quality. It's a 3x3 rack with 11 gauge steel and 5 8 inch hardware. It's got west side hole spacing, which is one inch spacing in the bench region and two inches outside of that. It's got a thousand pound capacity, Comes in a lot of color options, though right now they're limiting them since it's hard to keep things in stock. You can get the height 80 or 93 inches, and there's laser cut numbers at every five holes. Matt has a pretty beefy setup here with flip down safeties, flat sandwich J-cups, spotter arms, front extensions, the dip attachment, and the list goes on and on. It comes in three depth options, 24 inches, 30 inches, and 41 inches. You can get a four post or six post version. You can get wall mounts. There's a lap pull down option, ISO arms, belt squat, and on and on. And don't worry too much if you were missing Maddie. He did help us throughout the process. <laughs> We unboxed the PR4000. It's very well packaged. Haven't seen any damage yet. Now we're gonna remove the old T2. Matt, are you regretting your decision? I think for what it was, it was a good decision at the time. But as you get more into the hobby and stuff and you wanna kind of like expand and kind of get something a little bit nicer. <laughs> I think that this was a good Wait, idea to upgrade. Maddie, he says no dialogue in this video. No. The T2 is a rack I've uh, recommended for an economy rack. But for, <laughs> but for somebody who, like Matt, who's actually quite strong, it's probably... But for somebody like Matt, who's quite strong, it's probably not going to make it in the long run. He really put this thing to its limits over the three or four years he's had it. So we're pretty happy to upgrade. Now we're assembling the power rack. It's not a particularly difficult exercise. I just looked at the pictures on the website and decided if we wanted that configuration. It doesn't take a whole lot of brain power. And as I found out, Matt didn't actually run this by his wife before purchasing it. And since I had encouraged him to buy this rack in the first place, you could debate if there's a whole lot of intelligence in this room anyway. Looking at it as we put it together, we found no blemishes on the powder coat. And this, as I'll touch on later, is a commercial quality rack. Is it overkill? Probably, but are most of our home gyms? Probably. That being said, if you want to go even more overkill, you could look at the PR5000. It's still three by three, but it's going to have one inch hardware. And when it comes down to rec or really any brand, those are two I'd spend some time debating. So we just roughed it together. Now I have a two by three rack at home. And if you're debating a three by three rack, there's basically a few reasons you might want to go there. One, it's kind of the standard now. You're gonna find a lot more accessories, companies. It's not that they're not supporting their two by three racks, but they're not innovating with them. So something like this is gonna have a lot more options for add-ons. Two, it gives you another inch. And let's be honest, boys, who doesn't want another inch? Am I right? Three, because it's modular, uh, it's a tube, you can put the pieces on however you want. So let's say Matt decides he doesn't need these legs in the front, which we were just talking about, it makes it a little long. He can take these and throw them in the back um, in case he wants to put his dip here, you know, in case he needs more stability. Will he? No, this is probably, I, I think three by three racks are probably overkill for most home gyms, but somebody big and strong like Matt, who works out six times a week with his family, he's gonna get the use out of it. Now I think we're gonna start bolting the accessories on. We have weight horns, we have spotter arms, we have all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna roll that next. Here we are bolting on the weight horns. And I wanna just say that they're just chunks of steel you throw your weights on. But what I like that Rep does 
is they don't have a powder coat finish on them, which you just rip off anyway by putting your plates on and off. And there's a rubber grommet at the end so your plates can't smash into the bolts that hold it to the rack. He did pick up their sandwich J-cups, which I think, as you've seen from my previous videos, is a great idea for protecting your barbell. They do have a round version as well, and that's for the 4,000 or the 5,000. The safety spotter arms are another great investment for him. It allows you to do things outside of the rack, though I actually use mine inside of the rack because I can't get drop safeties for my rack, which of course Matt got, and I am insanely jealous of these drop safeties are rock solid and they have UHMW plastic on the top of them to protect your bar in case anything drops. It did take us a second to figure out how they work, but once they went in, it was pretty simple. And they have holes with numbers laser etched along in them, which makes them even more versatile. And if you couldn't tell, this rack is rock solid. Matt weighs 250 pounds, and when he was playing around on it, doing things, it didn't budge an inch. And I have to say, he was downright giddy putting this thing together and playing around with it. I could tell how excited he was. And even though I was a little bit jealous, I was still happy for him. And of course, Matt got the dip attachment because even though he's a monster of a human being, he can still get that dip done. Or maybe he just bought it so I can use it when I visit. Yeah, that's probably it. The only thing we've noticed so far besides one of those caps up there being a little beat up is this piece of UHMW is actually upside down. Not a big deal. We got to pull these two Allen screws and flip it around so we can get the pin in when we set this dip bar up. While Matt fixes the dip attachment, there are a few major differences if you're debating the Rep PR 4000 or the Rogue Monster Lite, which is a direct competitor, seeing as they're both three by three with five eighths inch hardware. Number one, the Rogue one's gonna run you about $700 more. This thing is under 2000 as Matt has it set up, shipped to your door at about $700 for Rogue, and that's without Rogue having the drop safeties. You're gonna come with two less weight horns and the front extensions, which Matt probably doesn't need, but he's got them. It's also, this is made in China. It's designed in Denver, but it is imported from China, whereas Rogue is American, if that matters to you. And a lot of times it does to me. That's something to factor in, but again, that's a big price difference. Last but not least, if you do get the Rogue counterpart, it is about two inches wider, which to me is actually one of the main points why I like this rep rack. It's easier to rack and unrack things. You guys have seen a lot of my videos. My friends are really good at smashing my equipment on the J-Cups, so that's a big selling point to me as well. One thing to think about if you're still on the fence on this versus a rogue rack and if you want to live in the best of both worlds you can do what some people do and that's to mix rogue attachments onto your rep rack just make sure you do your research first to make sure things are going to fit we just finished building this thing matt what do you think about your purchase i think that this was an excellent purchase honestly i wish that i would have found his site sooner because honest at home gym reviews for equipment without maybe some crazy sponsorship. Influencing those reviews is very difficult. Subscribe. So, I mean, <laughs> what do you think about the rack overall, especially compared to your Titan rack? So the Titan rack is definitely, it was okay for what it was like a first time purchase. This is a rack that I never see myself replacing. This thing is sturdy. There's so many attachments. I mean, I'm just ready to start working out in it now, but if I didn't wake up like, at 5 a.m. I probably would. <laughs> yeah. We didn't even get anything bolted together yet. Like we still got to put the landmine and stuff on. There's a lot of accessories and things you can get for and this. And all these little nuanced things that like I just never knew were possible where, you know, just one from the security standpoint, it's sturdy. It's not moving. There's the west side spacing, which I'm I'm thrilled to be having a chance to try because I always could never find the right spot. There's these excellent... Um, J cups, we got the safeties, the spotter arms. Like, this is the type of thing I would get when I was at the gym back before I had my son. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think we pretty much got it. So let's really test this thing out and get some curls in this bad boy. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Let's get drilling. You hit me.